Listen, you know what time it is. It's time for another episode of your favorite new podcast entitled We Hate You Internet! And again, gather around. We are here live in the Panorama Brand Studios here in Houston, Texas. Houston's premier podcast studio. And this is is We Hate You Internet. It's a, it's a podcast designed to bring awareness to some of the problematic effects of the internet on our lives as well as celebrate the beautiful simplicity of our humanity. <laughs> I'm your host, Wilfred Hamilton. Uh, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, Clara is not here today. She is uh, out under the weather, so we definitely wish her well. We've been praying that she uh, gets to feeling better, uh, and she'll be back, I'm sure, here real, real soon. So. I'm sure she'll take a look at this. And when you do, lady, come on back now. We miss you already. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying, we have a designated hitter in the building, <laughs> I guess, today to help us uh, with our topic. Uh, man, uh, if I went through his biography and list of uh, accomplishments and awards and all that jazz, man, we'd be here all day talking. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so um, we'll just kind of keep it simple. Uh, this man is highly esteemed here in the city of Houston and abroad. Uh, he is the owner of uh, the Bates Law Firm. Uh, he made it clear to me that uh, his partner is also his son, is the associate <laughs> of that law firm. He made, he made that very clear. <laughs> um, he is uh, president, you still president of uh, the Alpha Phi Alpha. Hey, hey, watch it, watch it. Wait, 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 wait. I used to be president okay. of Kappa Alpha Psi. Forget, okay, ho okay, hold on, correct me. Give International me right. president, Grand Polmark, <laughs> Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Got it? P yes, sir, yes, sir. Please, <laughs> all those, please have mercy on me. <laughs> have good. mercy on me. We're good. Call off the hit. <laughs> We're good. It's called off. Uh, we bring him here today uh, to discuss uh, our topic for today, uh, which is uh, the depolarization of the political process. Um, it was something that, I, that was on my mind really to discuss um, just because of I think about, you know, the premise of our whole platform is really uh, dissecting reality from illusion. And that's one of the things that we really try to focus in on on this platform. And I, I can't think of anything that's uh, brings more confusion to the minds of the masses than the political landscape. W you know, once in a time when people talk, think about politics, they automatically think about, you know, federal level. Uh, they, you know, think government, I'm sorry, they think presidential, a race, maybe a Congress, a senator, a governor maybe, uh, and then mudslinging, name calling, all that stuff. That's what they think about. You know, and I, and I really got to think, and I'm not the, you know, the biggest political guy myself, but I just thought about how important uh, politics, you know, the, the, how important they are as far as the, the part they play in our lives, how they affect our lives. It's a lot more than the stuff that we always see and talk about. You know what I mean? There are different levels of politics. And I really wanted to kind of talk uh, to someone who had some experience. I know 2018, you ran for Texas uh, House of Representatives? I ran in 2016. 16. And I ran again in 2018. Okay. 16, 18. Mm -hmm. And then currently in 2000, 2019, you were elected uh, position one, All Dean ISD School Board. That's correct. Put position one being president, yes? I am president of the board. Yes, sir. Uh, third largest uh, school district in the city. Yes. 12th yes. largest in the state. Yes, that's both correct. Indeed. I did a little research. All right. <laughs> You're right. I got the first one. I got the first one. We're, we're going to get past that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and that is an elected position. Uh, people may not be aware of that. And that's one of the things that we just, we talk about. You know what I mean? Like, um, the political process is more than just what we talk about. And it, and it affects our lives in ways that we really don't, 
uh, the average person really doesn't consider. And so I really want to kind of come on and talk about uh, the way that our political process works in our country uh, and how it affects our lives and how we can impact it with the part that we can play as citizens, our rights in, as citizens in this country and how we can uh, participate in that process um, to or our rights to be able to participate in that process the right way. That's kind of the idea of what I want right. to talk about today. And so um, I guess we'll start with first question I want to ask is why are politics important? Because politics impact every single aspect of your life. Uh, the technology in this microphone has to be approved and registered someplace by the government. Hmm. There's going to be certain standards that are going to have to be made. The chair that you're sitting in, hmm. a driver's license, everything that we do, politics covers it. There's somebody at some level that's making a decision and it dictates how our life goes. Um, when we buy gasoline, somebody that's elected made a decision of how much of that gallon we pay is going to go to taxes. Hmm. Somebody's making the decision pretty much with everything in our lives. So it's, a, it's important, it's, it's very important. <laughs> See, and, and, and that's why we brought the man <laughs> on the show right there. Uh, that You just said a mouthful. Uh, the, the next question I was going to ask is, based on your first question, why is that something that people are unaware of? You know, but you just said so much. I, I really want to take a moment to kind of just well, digest I, I, it because. I can, I can respond to that part of it if whew, I can. Man. So for some reason, people are apathetic. Hmm. And let they me back care. up. Let me back up. Thank you for having me here. Oh. I should have sat down in the first place. I don't know who this Winifred person is. <laughs> uh, I know you as Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember you crawling around on the floor at the church as a one-year-old and a two-year-old. So this Winifred thing is new to me. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, mention who, that, 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 that we, we go way, way back. <laughs> but I'm so very, very proud of you. Right. I, I, truly, I truly am. For whatever reason, people do not think that their vote counts hmm. because of all of the noise that's happening. It's noise that's happening on the federal level. It's noise that's happening at the state level. There's noise and we listen to the noise and then we'll say, why should I bother? Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you should bother. One of the things I hear the most is, why should I vote? My vote doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and, and I hear that. And your vote does matter. Mm -hmm. I'm testament of that. In 2019, there were four people running for position one at Aldean School Board. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 13,000 votes were cast. I won by 48. Razor thin. Out of 13,000 votes cast, I won by 48 votes. Every vote does matter. Now, because I won, I have been able to do some things at Aldean that I think should be done. Mm -hmm. For example, within days after being sworn in, I looked at all of the data of Aldean, every grade, every course, and I found that Aldean was at the state average in eighth grade math. Hmm. Now, Aldean is 72% Hispanic, 22% black. When I looked at the data, what I saw was that Aldean was right at the state average for eighth grade math, hmm. okay? Blacks were 20 points below in eighth grade math. And when I got on the board, 
I met a board member that said that ain't important. Hmm. Now, hmm. let me tell you why it is important. Eighth grade math is one of those momentum points. And what I mean by that is, if you pass eighth grade math, your chances of graduating from high school increases. Hmm. That course. If you pass eighth grade math, your chances of going to college increase, all right? The reverse is, if you fail eighth grade math, your chances of graduating decrease. Hmm. Lynchpin. Okay, now I spent, my fir- I've been a lawyer for 40 years. Mm-hmm. And my first 10 years, I did criminal defense work. And I've defended everybody from crimes of theft, to capital murder where the death penalty was on the table. Mm. And I represented people in between. It was unusual to see somebody with a high school diploma in criminal court. Mm. And it was very unusual to see somebody with a high school diploma in criminal court. And so, On the positive side, we want to make sure that kids graduate from high school. We want to make sure that they go to college if college is what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do college, that's fine. Do military. That's fine. If you don't want to do that, then let's do, do a job situation when you graduate. But the other part about it is those in our society that don't have hope Mm-hmm. They're the ones that's looking to hit us in the head and take our stuff. Goodness. So, mm. 48 votes out of 13,000 votes put me in a position to address that. And if you look on Aldine ISD's <coughs> website, you will see one of the things that the superintendent must do in the next five years is to increase our passage of eighth grade math. Mm. That's just one example of one, why every vote counts, and two, why if you get somebody in place who's hardest in the right place, man, you can make a difference. <laughs> okay, yeah, let me let me regroup. So you're giving me more than I anticipated. <laughs> and I, okay, now I, I just want to point out how how powerful what you said, the explanation that you gave is, uh, because not only did you demonstrate, uh, like I said, the first question, why politics are important, because they affect literally every aspect of your life, of your right, life. Right. You know. Um, and, and Alex, I, th- I think I've heard the same thing you know, on numerous occasions. I've actually said it before. My vote doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You're thinking about, I'm thinking about presidential race, you know, tens of millions of votes, uh, cab, ballots cast. What's one? And they already have an agenda. Da, 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 all this stuff you're thinking in your head. Uh, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I really started to pay attention and, and, and like really learn about local politics and how important local politics are. Uh, I think that you just gave a, a man, a superb uh, uh, example of the power of one vote. It's powerful. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and, and it really, like I say, I, I appreciate it. it helps me really just to understand because it's, it's something I've been thinking about anyway. But like when you lay it out like that, uh, 48 votes make the difference between uh, Eighth grade math being a priority for all Dean ISD and 48 votes made the difference. Had I not got those 48 votes, that would not be going on right now, period. And and that is, you know what I mean? That's our show for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, okay, listen, I, let's, let's move on a little bit, uh, just a little bit. Sure. I want to I wanna go back and uh, talk to young Randy. And I mean, what inspired you uh, to want to get involved with the political process? It, okay, no, before you even answer that, I know we had a small discussion about 
you know, you said you were a teenager during the civil rights movement. You know, we had a preliminary discussion, small, uh, but impactful. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, that's a conversation I've had with a couple of people just about, and, and I, I want to preface, you know, this part of the conversation. Uh, obviously, you and I are both African-American males. Now, both of us are proud of our history and our heritage. Um, I make no, you know, I'm not bashful about that. Uh, but the one thing that I, I'm, I, I'm always mindful of uh, is um, not to um, operate within the shackles and the mental conditioning of, of our generation. That's fair. You know what I mean? Um, I, I think I'm always mindful and aware, and aware of the history. I think that's extremely important to understand how we got here. History is always important. But I do believe that it's important that as we as you move forward, that you operate in the liberties that you've been awarded. You know what I mean? And not and try not to move forward with the conditioning. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, as we discuss this portion, and I'm really interested and excited to hear what you have to say. Um, what was that like growing up in that environment? Um, because, 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 I, like I said, that's why I want to pre preface this statement. Because I remember having a conversation with a couple of people and just be like, "Yo, um, you know, you see that footage, that black and white footage on the screen, and come across the screen, and you know, all that chaos and craziness." I'm like, "Those people are still alive. A lot of those people, are, you know, both colors you're looking at, are still alive. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't this ain't that long ago." <coughs> You know what I mean? So people think like this is just oh, it's such a long time, hundreds of years late. Nah, <laughs> people are still walking on the earth that lived during that time. You know, and they weren't little babies either. Like they, they, they remember this stuff. And so, um, what was that like? I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and I was an inner city teenager, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. and. I had no social consciousness. I was hanging out with the boys. That boy. I was probably <laughs> involved in things I should not have been involved in. Older Randy uh, may have been representing <laughs> younger. <laughs> That's true. Uh, oh I, I got I got the wrong end of an M16 mm. by a National Guardsman. Really? Uh, because there was a curfew going on and and we weren't supposed to be out. And, but I was out, and um, I caught it. I caught the M16 in my rib, and so I, I remember th that part of it. Mm. It was necessary, but I don't condone the violence. Understood. Okay. Now, as a result of the '60s. I graduated from high school in 69, mm. okay? And meaning I was in high school when all this was going on. Mm -hmm. And there was some changes in America that happened because of what happened in 63, 64, 65. One of those changes allowed me the opportunity to go to college. And I'm, I'm an inner city <clears throat> kid from a family of seven. Mm -hmm. I was the oldest of seven. Neither my mom or dad went to college. And so they <clears throat> created programs to try to identify inner city black kids to give them opportunity to go to college. And that's how I ended up going to Ohio State University. Mm -hmm. That's where I went, and it's a whole nother story about that experience. But it was a result of those things that happened mm -hmm. in the mid '60s. That toward the <clears throat> end of the '60s gave me a, a chance to go to college, and I don't believe that I would have had the opportunities that I just described with Aldine Independent School District had I not had a college degree. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to go to law school had I not had a college degree. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, I benefited, and I would like to think that society 
has benefited by the things that have occurred in my life as a result of that point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to running for state rep, I was the first black appointed and elected to Lone Star College. Mm -hmm. I served on there for 21 years. I served as president of Lone Star College Board of Trustees for seven years, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, I go all the way back to the 60s and I can retrace all of the things that happened into my life because of that point uh, in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, that was a very important time in our, in our history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm an example of at least one person that was able to take advantage of it. And because of that, I feel I'm obligated to benefit society. Mm. I'm not quite sure if that's what you wanted, but that's what happened. I mean, I, I take it how you give it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll right. take it how you give it, man. This ain't scripted. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so then with that being said, uh, what what inspired you to you know, go along the political path? I mean, you said that you weren't really politically conscious growing up, so then what triggered uh, a pursuit in the political arena? Unknowingly, I was programmed by my father. Mm. Mm. And I'm the <clears throat> oldest of seven. Yeah. You knew my dad. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, a union man. And he helped, he helped found the union in the metal shop that he worked in. He uh, was president of the Democratic Club there. Um, he was president of other stuff with just a high school diploma. And, and as I was the oldest, he would take me with him sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I would watch him do what he did. And what I saw him doing was at Thanksgiving delivering turkeys to people's houses. Mm -hmm. I saw him putting the cheers up for political rallies for the people, the elected officials, you know, and we're putting the cheers up for the meeting hall. You know, I saw him doing that. Uh, I saw him getting the signs and distributing the signs for people who are running for office. Uh, it was not unusual for the mayor of Cleveland to be at my house. Mm. It was not unusual for the state representative to be at my house. It was not unusual for president of city council to be at my house. And so I saw those people. Now I was told to get out the room <laughs> while they did whatever they did, but I saw them mm -hmm. and I knew uh, what they were doing. So now I'm in Ohio State University and I need a job. And so I called my dad, I said, I need a job. And so he called the state representative who um, had been at the house, and he said, my son is at Ohio State, he need a job. So he made me his page. Hmm. And in 1972-73, I was the second black page in the Ohio House of Representatives. What is a page for those that may not have A right? gopher. <laughs> Go for this, go for this, go for that. <laughs> You're just a gopher, but it was really cool. Yeah. Because we was, we would, it was, uh, they had these high swivel chairs and uh, theater style, and we stayed up against the wall, and they would say, come here, and then you go there, and you go do something. You go get mm -hmm. something. You run an errand. And, man, I thought that was cool. <laughs> And I said, that's what I want to do. Uh. I said, that, that's why I ran for state rep twice, yeah. <laughs> because that's what I wanted to do. And so uh, I had a, I was full-time student at Ohio State, and I was also a full-time uh, marketing rep for 3M Corporation mm. at the same time. And they taught me that corporate America thing. And um, so I went to law school 
And you know how you dress in college. You wear jeans, T-shirt, or something like that. It's what you wear to class. Mm -hmm. But because I had been in corporate America, one day a week, I'd wear a suit and tie. Hmm. And I might have been the only one in the class wearing a suit and tie. Mm -hmm. And before we got through the first semester, I was approached and said, we want you to, to run for class president. Mm -hmm. So somebody saw something in me. Mm -hmm. And so I ran for president of the class. I was elected president of my freshman class at law school. So that was my first elected position. Mm. Okay? And so... Um, Presentation. Huh? I believe that people want to be led. Everybody's not built or wired to run for office. Yeah, I agree. But that doesn't mean that everybody doesn't want good things to happen in their community or in their state or in their nation. Mm -hmm. And so I think unconsciously people are watching and they're looking for somebody that they believe has leadership abilities. Mm -hmm. And I got identified. I was not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It was not... In fact, I was trying to survive law school. I wasn't thinking about doing any extracurricular And so I, so I did that. And so I remember, I might be telling a secret now. Yeah. All right. This is an exclusive. Like, hey, buckle up. Here we go. <laughs> We're all exclusive. <laughs> Most people don't remember until Sylvester Turner ran for county commissioner first uh -huh. we know he ran for mayor in 92 and he ran for mayor a second time and he ran for mayor the third time and won but people don't remember that he ran for mayor against L. Franco Lee Carl Walker and uh, and him and there was a fourth person I forget who it was and I was uh, supporting Carl Walker because he was my fraternity brother mm -hmm. and then after it was all with um, Sylvester to get ready to run for state rep. Now remember, I was a page in our house house representatives. And he approached me, I don't even know how he found out who I was. And he said, I, I want you to help me get elected state rep. I said, bet. But I want to succeed you. Hmm. I didn't think it was going to take 20, 30 years, <laughs> you know, for that, for, that, for that to happen. And so it was something I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but in the meantime, I started doing volunteer work with my fraternity. Now I'm in the mid-80s, and I'm doing volunteer work with my fraternity. And um, I'm starting to move up but I'm doing volunteer work. So, I got a call from somebody I didn't know. So it used to be North Harris College. Mm -hmm. And then Montgomery County annexed themselves to North Harris College. Mm -hmm. The voters said, the voters, they have enough property value that they could have had their own community college district and they could have been one of the top 10 in the state. They would, they had, their property value was that much. And so. Can I, can I slow you down? Property value and political power. Can you, is that, is that, is that what I just heard, heard you allude to? Yeah. Can you just kind of just briefly just well, touch I can, on. I can slow down and, and, and say this. Because these are the things that people don't people don't know nothing about this. You know what I mean? Like, that's fair. That's fair. And it's so, and yeah. I and I and I go through it like it's nothing. But <laughs> but, I, but I know that it is. So to have a community college, um, you have to have a base of taxpayers. Okay. And those taxpayers are homeowners who are paying property taxes. 
because it's from those property taxes that will sustain administration and everybody in it. That's how it's paid. So, so the deal that the state of Texas made with community colleges was if you do the district, what we will do in return is we will um, contribute to you. Mm. We'll contribute to you. K through 12 is a combination of property taxes and money from Austin, K through 12. Mm. That's how we're funded. We're funded by the taxpayers, and we're funded by appropriations that come from the state. Mm -hmm. Same thing with community colleges. And so what I'm saying is, is that Montgomery County, their, their houses are so expensive. I mean, they have million dollar homes there. Mm -hmm. Aldean doesn't have million dollar homes, mm -hmm. okay? The property value in Aldean, the average property might be 50, 60, maybe 70,000. Mm -hmm. I know public education districts whose average property value is over a million dollars, okay? And so Montgomery County, their, their property taxes were so high, they actually could have done their own community college. Mm -hmm. They could have done Montgomery County Community College. Okay? Yeah. And funded it. Mm -hmm. But they took the position, why should we go through all of that when there's a successful uh, community college uh, North Harris? Mm -hmm. So they had their voters vote to become a part of North Harris College. Mm -hmm. Okay? So at that point, North Harris had seven members on their board. And when the annexation passed, they wanted a voice on the board. Mm -hmm. So North Harris, who then became North Harris Montgomery Community College District, added two more seats on the board. Mm -hmm. So they went from seven members to a nine-member board mm -hmm. so that they would get a board seat. Mm -hmm. Montgomery. However, the federal government said, you can't do that because you don't have no blacks on your board. Hmm. <laughs> so and this is why politics is important, people. <laughs> <laughs> So what ended up happening was uh, they put together a search committee to find a black. And I got a phone call. Hmm. And it, it didn't hurt that I was a lawyer. Hmm. It didn't hurt that I was a founder of the Acres Home, Multi Acres Home Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. It didn't hurt that I was a founder of 100 Black Men Metropolitan Houston. Mm -hmm. I heard about it that. didn't bothered that I was active in my community like that and so they came to me again I wasn't seeking this I didn't even know what was going on and then I get a phone call and they say we want to interview you. 